the graveyard and the closet. When I first started writing stories as a little boy in the basement of my grandparents' house, perched on a little chair with my typewriter on a little table and pecking away very slowly to write little short stories, I was always really trying to write large and long stories. And I thought about how wonderful it would be to have written so much. When I grew older and went to high school, I thought the same way. And I looked at the small accordion file that I filled up with my incoherent ramblings and thought how wonderful it was and how wonderful it would be once I had written more. Now my box, and now I have a box and a little more of writing, which takes up space in the closet. So much space that I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. It rests under a box of doodads and random pieces of project in a clear bin with hanging folders. It's the type of box you might use to file away records you no longer need. I have one of these boxes full with more writing spilling into another, which contains my letters of promotion, commendations, and awards from my short time in the military, followed by my half of the stack of a sermons my dad wrote. I used to look at this stack and marvel. I used to look at it and think how wonderful it was that I had written so much over the years, but no longer. I've written enough books now that I've forgotten about some. I know I've written a comedy, a confession, some science fiction, a hipster love novel, and some farce, and even a young adult novel about an orphan runaway hitchhiking his way to a lost inheritance. And as I look through the box, I find more novels, and I just get sadder. And this is just the, uh, this is just what takes up the physical space. The things that have physical copies. There are also all the dead blogs and the 500 odd articles I wrote in the Marine Corps, and there are, are all the journals. I pulled this box out the other day to look at them and to see if I could bind some of them using my newfound hobby as, of bookbinding and put them on the shelf with the books that I read. And I became overwhelmed with sadness. It didn't seem like an accomplishment anymore. It seemed like an epic waste of time. Why had I written all these stories? Why had I spent all this time writing and writing and writing? I thought for sure that by the time I had made it to book 10, something would have happened. The box was not a monument of accomplishment. It was a graveyard of dead stories. It was a tomb and a place for lost dreams. It made me question the purpose of all this typing. The fault is with me, really. I've only ever sent out about 20 query letters in total. 20 is nothing in the grand scheme of things. It is only two per book, and I've only ever sent them out for a few of them. It made me question the writing, though. It made me question why I do this at all. I put the writing back, and I slid the boxes back into the closet and decided that it was best to be an example for my daughters. How can I tell them to keep going if their father quits? How can I tell them to keep trying if I decide to put it back it all away? So I've decided to keep writing. And as of now, the new book is over 8,000 words.